How's it going guys? This is Lauren from Etheric Tie, back with a random pick a card. For those of you, this is your first time. The best way to choose whether you want card one, two or three. Close your eyes, feel into your breath. Whichever one you're most drawn to is your card. And if you're still not sure, just watch all of them. So without further ado, let's start with number one. Okay. Queen of Pentacles in the reverse. Instability within the home life. I think some of you may be a, um, I think this is actually very much job money related. So not surprisingly with everything that's happening, um, depending on where you are, the nature of what our job is, is changing. And how many hours we're doing, how the routine of our job works, whether we need to change the specific routines in order for it to be more safe. Um, maybe we're working from home or a mixture of both. Perhaps, yeah, our hours are being reduced, therefore we're concerned about that money and the stability as well and what holds our future. So I, I think this is, this is an energy that a lot of people can resonate with at the moment that a lot of people are going through where before we might have had much more job security and financial stability, our investments and, and what have you, superannuation and uh, yeah, investments in home has just all gone topsy-turvy. Um, all of our plans that we had for our financial stability and our future or even retirement is just completely gone out the window and it's just instead replacing that is uh, fear anxiety and confusion unsureness uh, so yeah uh, my heart really goes out to the people that are experiencing this to some degree or another so what is uh, you know what I'm going to do something that I don't normally do with these picker cards and I'm actually going to draw another card for you because I feel like it's needed. Okay. We have ourselves the High Priestess. Now the High Priestess is... She has quiet... She's quiet... And she trusts her intuition. She has a very subtle knowing that everything is going to be okay. She goes internally because she's the opposite of the magician, which is like uh, like a very grand outwardly manifester and things are going incredibly well and things are flowing whereas the high priestess all of those things are still happening it's just all internal she is quietly working on her own abundance but she's not sharing that with other people so to take on the high priestess energy you have to maybe withdraw yourself from anything or anyone or any environment that is reinforcing this scarcity mindset that's reinforcing the fact that things aren't going to get better all of those really negative thought patterns that are just not helpful to you right now and I think that if you started to work quietly, you don't need to share it with everybody because sometimes, sometimes when we start to um, do some internal work on our beliefs around, um, around money, career, love, and if we start sharing that with other people, if they're not ready, if they're not ready to hear it and they're still stuck in like a scarcity, low vibrational mindset, they'll drag you down with them. They'll, they'll, they'll challenge you. They'll challenge the way, your way of thinking. They'll challenge you to, to kind of keep you stuck in this scarcity, in the fear. Um, you, you don't need that. That's not what you need right now. So don't tell anyone about it. 
but quietly start working on your own beliefs around fear this week and get really really clear and open have an open conversation with yourself about like okay where am I at emotionally right now where am I at financially okay uh, rather than taking on every single thing at once what do I need to do next what is my next little move and I don't need to tell everyone about it I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna not worry about what other other people are doing and I'm gonna do what I intuitively feel is right for me to do next so that's for you number ones for those who chose number two six of Pentacles okay this is okay so I'm actually picking up on a family dynamic where money is used as a weapon as in some people don't like receiving money from family or friends because they feel like there's string attached to it and I'm not saying that there never is some people can give completely altruistically um, I don't think that this is the case um, I think that yeah it's very common for people to grow up with ideas around money that it's a control tactic and we can have really negative connotations when it comes to receiving money and we distrust it we distrust money that we haven't fought for there has to be some like there's that belief that money doesn't come for free we have to be we have to hurt in order to to receive it so if you feel like there is going to be strings attached to receiving money but you you have maybe that other the other part of you that's like well i'm really really desperate ask the universe for another way um, because either way if you're re receiving something and there's um, fear associated with it then that's what you're going to get so if you get your energy right around your beliefs around money has strings attached to it or money you can't get money for free and money is energy just like anything else just like any other physical manifestation this just happens to be one of those ones that carries a heck of a lot of belief systems behind it and a heck of a lot of bad ones and it's almost as if it gets wrapped up in our own connections with our family members it has like such toxic manifestations when it comes to family members and money and even to the point where some people hold their will over their own children's head it's like that kind of energy sorry to bring everything down for you number two but um yeah this is the energy that we're dealing with and if you are really aware of this, but you're also desperate, well, then you're going to keep sitting in that desperation. So instead, if you're fighting with yourself over whether to receive money from someone that you think is going to be strings attached and you're pretty sure that's going to happen um, and you're expecting it, well, then, yeah, that's that's exactly what's going to happen. So um, you're better off. Um, working a little bit on your beliefs around strings being attached to money and uh, asking the universe for an alternative an alternative to um, uh, removing some of the anxiety that you have around money at the moment okay so that's number two number three oh 
Wheel of Fortune in the reverse. How interesting. So the Wheel of Fortune in the upright is a indication that things are going to change suddenly. That there's going to be a very quick change in direction. And I think some people may think like the Wheel of Fortune is if it's in the upright, it means you're going to have good luck. And if it's upside down, then you're going to have bad luck. It's not really about good luck, bad luck. It's just a change in direction. And depending on what our point of attraction is as to how that's going to go, whether it is going to go positively or negatively. When it's in the reverse, it's where we are resistant to change. That the universe is presenting you with an opportunity to make a different direction. They're going here, here's your opportunity. You've kind of been asking for it. Here it is. Are you gonna be a man or a woman of your word and take it? Because there's only, look, opportunities will flow in and out of our lives and we can take them or not and they will take us on different directions and different um, journeys of our life and that there will be other opportunities that come in depending on the ebb and flow of whatever energy is happening for you at that time but there is windows of opportunity there are energetic windows of opportunity and if you don't take them well then you're just gonna have to wait till the next one and I kind of think that if you're hesitating on making a change that is being offered to you it, it might, you're going to be waiting a very long time for the next one. So people can be really afraid of change because we get so used to what's happening right here, right now. We might not be happy with it, but we're tolerating it. And, and we're not like on a, on a evolutionary level. Our body is saying like, oh, we're surviving. We're not, we're not dying. We're not in any immediate danger. But like, you're, it's not great. It's just, just surviving. It's just getting by. But there's no thriving. Surviving, but not thriving. And I think that's what the universe is going to present you. It's going to be like, well, would you like to thrive? You've been asking for it. Here it is. Why don't you why don't you give it a go? And I'm not saying that there's necessarily going to be something huge. It could be that somebody says, "Hey, you want to you want to join like a fitness group. We're all going down to the park on weekends. You want to come with us?" And even though that seems quite small, it's actually quite a change in direction for a lot of things for you. Someone might say, hey, I'm like, you might see something pop up on your feed um, on Facebook around just creative writing. And you're like, I've always wanted to do some creative writing, but what if, what if it's a waste of time? What if I fail? What if it goes nowhere? I'm like, well, what if it, what if you have fun? What if you learn something new? What if you meet someone and have like an incredible conversation around it? What if you find out that you're actually really good at it? What if you write a book? What if that book becomes well liked? You know, you can go both ways with this. The Wheel of Fortune goes both ways. You, people tend to default to the negative as in in what ways could this good thing go bad? In what ways could this thing go well? You can do that just as easily. It's all theoretical. It's all up in the air. It's all however way you want to make it. And you know what? However way it turns out, there's something to be said about giving it a go because there'll always be 
something good that you take from it. There always will be. Particularly the idea of like, well, that was a fantastic experience. And even with dating, so I'm just going to put this in at the end, like whether a date goes good or bad, it's still good. It's still an experience. It's still a story. It's still a, like you've now become more clear on what you do and do not want. So by taking an opportunity, it's kind of like rolling the dice, spinning the wheel, and just seeing where it lands. How exciting. What if it lands and it's just like the date is a complete disaster? But like, isn't that kind of exciting? It could be a complete disaster. That's, that's pretty exciting. It could be the most amazing date in the world. That's also exciting. So can't we give equal merit to uh, good luck, bad luck situations? They're, they're not, it's, it's not real. Um, so it, it's all based on your perspective of how you're interpreting how those things turn out. And the meaning that you give to them, the value you decide to bestow upon it. Um, yeah, so that's number three. Hope that made sense. Um, if you would like a personal reading, go to www.etheriktai.com or just uh, send me a personal message. Uh, and yeah, like, comment, subscribe if you like my vibe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.